Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. Thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk about my PhD project uh, in CGRAF. Um, my name is Hossein, um, and my project is the title of my project is Displacement of. Gosh, I'm so nervous. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not very fierce, honestly. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's displacement of self-continuity, a heuristic inquiry into identity transitions in a narrative short term. So it's a multidisciplinary research. I'm um, so I, this is definitely a creative heuristic research. I go through the process of um, a heuristic inquiry. I um, you know try to apply computer graphics um, knowledge as well plus a lot of um, psychological studies that I will explain um, about it. Um, let me talk about a little bit about myself. I've been an animation and visual effects artist for more than 18 years. I had the pleasure of working on uh, like um, feature films, animated um, documentaries, and on, on uh, lots of commercials and um, lots of um, TV series, um, you know, being in industry is um, it, it has its own merits. But I am a researcher, so I've been doing um, like studying about social sciences and everything. And um, some of our um, projects, like this one, won the Cannes Film Award, which is very nice. Um, but I'm an artist too, so I do a lot of arts. I um, and I enjoy uh, writing, creating paintings, <coughs> drawing, um, and I was wondering how I can contribute to the body of knowledge and cast light on some like dark corners of um, of human like, experience by doing the research. So you might have um, noticed that heuristic research. Um, phrase within the title of my research. Um, what is that? <laughs> so um, let, let's see what. So everybody knows what research is. So um, so let's let's give an example. We're gonna do some research on dogs. You all have seen. Um, um, you all know about popular um, study about researching on dogs. Just imagine that. You continue and you do every sort of scientific research on dogs. And you would be able to understand like how their brain, brain work, how their social life is, how their, you know, <coughs> biology is, like their breed and everything. But still, there's a question that remains unanswered and how is to be adopted. So what is the quality of being a doctor? So we wish that we would have been able to interview the dog, ask questions, how do you feel, talk about that, let us know, um, and the dog would start um, going through that process. But unfortunately, we can't. But what about humans? So when it comes to research on humans, there's so whatever we do, like whatever you heard today, and whatever we do is all about ourselves. It's for humans. But research on humans, we you might start like um, you know thinking of um, stuff like um, this. But it could be, it could be a self-reflective research. It could be the researcher going back to him or herself and start to structurally document a heuristic inquiry, a self-reflective inquiry into, um, into to what happens in their um, understanding of the world, especially when they create, um, when they do creative arts or any, any sort of creativity. So one of the earliest um, books on this topic here is research, which I strongly recommend to read. It's not a lengthy book, it's a small one. 
um, by Clark Mustakas, one of the pioneers in this research methodology. He defines um, heuristic research, um, so this refers to a process of internal search through which one discovers the nature and meaning of experience and develops methods and procedures for further investigation and analysis. The self, so again, you see the self of the researcher is the central key in heuristic research. I am the researcher and the subject of my own research. The self of the researcher is present throughout the process and while understanding the phenomena, uh, the phenomenon with increasing depth, the researcher also experiences growing self-awareness and self-knowledge. So it's me trying to uh, add to the body of the knowledge, yet trying to, to go through a process of self-knowledge, which happened to me in this research. As um, he explains, the process of heuristic inquiry goes through these stages. Identify with, with the focus of um, the inquiry, self-dialogue, tacit knowing, intuition, indwelling, focusing, and finally, internal frame of um, difference. Um, so, in my own research, which is creating a short film, which is in the process and not finished yet, but you will see a lot of snippets of it today. Um, in my um, story, my movie, it's about, um, it's, it's a like um, fantasy world, let's say it's an imaginary universe where a couple of people are um, stranded and they refuge in a building and they find themselves suddenly in a sealed room, then the colors start to appear, they start to communicate with colors, but, and then they realize if they paint themselves, they would be able to survive. By getting exposed this, to this constantly changing environment, so the environment they're living is constantly changing. It's me. I have been in lots and lots of different countries, and I have been through the process of um, constantly change, I've been exposed to constantly changing environments. And, um, but the question is what happens to their identity? So these people start to like, to be able to, to survive, they have to paint themselves, to be able to travel through these painted, painted wall and universe. And um, the question I'm asking in this um, heuristic research is what is the potential of a narrative animated film as a device for unpacking and reflecting open identity change in individuals transitioning through displacement. So um, there are plenty of studies on um, identity and human identity, especially uh, when our identity is exposed to a constantly changed environment, which is a critical condition. Um, so like when we, we are displaced internally or externally. So in my case, I've been displaced externally, my, my location of life. But this displacement can be can happen like internally, like someone um, who who comes out with a new sexual orientation or um, starts to find out new set of friends. So it's all about understanding that self continuity and identity. So my heuristic research is kind of like a um, is a creative inquiry um, to re-examine these um, you know theories and ideas, which I'm going to explain. So when we are born, um, the sense of self is not there, basically, um, and 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 we uh, we develop that. So we create this encultured self by getting exposed to the others. We start to say, okay, this is me, these are other people, and this is how um, we start to like um, develop a sense of self. And um, we, that's the beginning of forming the identity. Then we start um, to join different groups, like our friends in the school, um, fans of a football team, um, our nationality, um, our religion or ideologies, um, like lots and lots of things. And then being 
part, member of these uh, groups require us to, to behave in a certain way. So we develop behaviors accordingly. So that collective sense of uh, continuity adds to our identity. So human individuals are stimulated to sustain their temporarily persistent sense of self-continuity in order to be able to see themselves as the same person despite all the changes in their physicality and mental perceptions. We all change tremendously throughout the life. Look at, look at your past and just re-examine that. And you see that like, well, we all know that physically we, we are a totally different person in terms of physicality and the atoms in our body, but also in the mental um, perception, we've, we've changed a lot and we might be totally a new person. But still we have that sense of self-continuity. Um, specifically one of the areas that I'm gonna um, exploring is, so I, as I explained, this kind of identity is, is shaped by us being connected to a lot of different groups. So let's say you are displaced to a new um, situation. So you go through a transitional phase. Many of us, are disconnected from the previous connections, but not connect, yet connected to, to a new um, um, group of um, identifications. So it's a limbo that we are, you know, kind of um, disconnected from everything. So it's like um, it's 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 one of the focus of the identity transition. And studying that um, area transitional phase is not possible by understanding memory. Because throughout this research, when I mention um, um, identity, I refer to autobiographical memory. So um, that's why my second supervisor, Professor um, Donna Rose Adis, uh, is a psychologist, is a neuropsychologist. And, um, and the, the, so in, like one of his uh, her quotes, uh, there is uh, something inherently human about both the capacity to contemplate who one is and the capacity to remember one's past. And I use um, this model in my research, which is a complicated like matrix of um, episodic autobiographical memory and semanticized um, autobiographical memory. So by episodic, like, I just had this morning um, peanut butter and honey. And so that's an episode of my, my life. But I love uh, peanut butter and honey. I can, I almost have it for every day. So, so that's, that's a semanticized part of um, my memory. But when did that, when did that start? It? When I started developing my love towards um, I have a very rough idea about it. I don't know. It's it's another. So, and then that self can be analyzed um, as an I self, which is the subjective sense of self, and me self, which is the content of the self. And um, I go through this process of so, like as you see, self, self continuous self seems cohesive, but it's convoluted. So that was uh, my, the theoretical side of my study. But on the practical side, I'm not, I'm not only writing a thesis, but I'm creating art. So a good, you know, a good thing about doing a PhD is that you have access to all those university um, um, resources and you can, you can do um, experimentation. So like when I work for the industry, I am like, I always wanted to do to, to, to create in a certain way, but now it's, I'm free to do a lot of experimentations. I started to do a lot of um, deep learning and neural network ap applying the current the, the existing knowledge. I'm not developing any um, smart, intelligent things that you guys are, are doing. Actually, I'm using your works, and I leave it, and I create art through that, and I um, and I reflect back to you. So I started reading through a lot of like papers on um, deep learning and neural network, um, 
and um, non-photorealistic rendering. I am doing a lot of photogrammetry and laser scanning. So this was my early versions of um, photogrammetry setup that I made at uni. So, and, and the result was fairly okay. Um, this is my Sarah, one of my, one of my actors in my movie. She's been scanned. Um, but by, like, by expanding the, the fixture, uh, I could get like, very good um, result. This is Marco and my other actor. Um, so like this is him within the Houdini environment, who is being like over here from me. I did a lot of um, laser scanning, which the result can get into a good um, output by processing it. You see that I would have been able to get my digital film. Um, so because I want my characters to perform and act. So that's why I do a lot of, so this is like one of the early renders of my main um, ca character. Uh, she's an actual actress. So I do a lot of texture painting, literally. It means I have printed um, the UV mapping on canvas and I paint on, on that. So it's texture painting, but in a, in a literal way. So, so a lot of experimentation on that side. Um, the, the initial um, result is, is is nice because I want that quality of um, you know paint on canvas, yet the realism. Um, I use a lot of mocap. We are um, happy to have a lot of um, facilities at AUT. Um, so. And because I want a, a proper um, performance captured. So because uh, that's like acting would resonate the, 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 the exploration of identity um, for, for, my, for my actors better. So this is them in a rough sea that they're both over tense. So you can track my... Um, exploration week by week on my uh, blog hosseinajafi.com slash stella which is the documentation of my PhD progression. Thank you so much. Jackie, do you want to... Very interesting trying to combine um, a lot of different things here. Um, to me, you know, having read read the paper, it there's I think what the most important thing is you left out is why you're using this artistic um, construct of painting yourself into a new culture, um, and that I think is is sort of one of the central components of your PhD work, that there is this new metaphor, this for how one takes their sense of self into a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure that that, that came across in your uh, yeah, presentation. Yes. So I mean, oh, the things thing. like the topic of this, this short film where they're refugees mm -hmm. and one figures out how to incorporate themselves into the new culture and one doesn't. Mm. As I recall, yes, yes. Um, I, I think that's that's really important um, for for um, what you're trying to say. Yes, and um, what you're doing is instead of just writing a story and saying this is you know this is all of the psychology comes down to this. How do we how do we navigate new situations and make it and without losing our sense of self? Mm -hmm. And and the movie is going to be a very beautiful rendition an example of that okay. so that incredibly visual visceral way yes. whereas that's, that's watching point. a documentary is not yeah. going to do that yeah. and that's the important part of art what art can do is give us that shock of recognition in a way that we'll never forget it and that's what you're doing exactly thank you, thank you. anybody else like to comment 
I'd just like to comment. I, I very much enjoyed your presentation. Oh, thank you so and much. Paper, and I look forward to seeing the movie in Me too. great detail. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I love the way in which you're exploring um, identity through, you know, through art and. Then I, I thought okay, I have to na keep narrowing it down so mm -hmm. to, to be able to focus onto the main creative artistic creation through art in 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 an embodied uh, like in a context in virtual reality mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. rather than just yeah yeah yes yeah. yes future future work, future work. work. <laughs> second history. When I come to SIGGRAPH, which I like about SIGGRAPH, is that uh, I usually come as a technologist. You understand this. Yeah. And I'm looking at presentations and evaluating them technically. How do they, you know, the questions, how do they prepare? And then I get confronted. Yeah. <laughs> and the presentation that is, for lack of a better metaphor, bright brain, holistic. I'm very humble. Yeah. And I have to do an identity <laughs> shift. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and there's actually this inner turmoil that goes on. Is that, and then when I make the shift, the evaluation is entirely different. What did I learn? How did this, you know? But I, I walk out of here thinking, I want to pick up my painting again. So <laughs> yeah. that's my evaluation of the presentation. 